Wait, right. wait, wait, no, wait. Whitney has to react to this picture I'm sending her before we record. Okay. Okay. Well, the recording's so already cut, happening. Let's cut this part out. So, patrons, enjoy <laughs> this experience. There's a secret photo. All right, Jurassic Park movies. We're ranking them. Welcome to the Master of Modern Podcast. I'm your host, Alex Kessler, and here with my co-host, Ben Bateman, and my wife, Whitney Kessler. Uh, yeah. And we are in the midst of Ixalan preview season, um, and uh, and we're excited to rank both these Jurassic Park cards, give our one, uh, you know, nine out of ten stars rankings to them, uh, as What's well as Ixalan. Ixalan is the uh, Mesoamerica a themed plane. It's a plane filled with pirates, dinosaurs, vampire themed conquistadors, and mm. um, and uh, like merfolk. Okay, so like just mermaids. the Jurassic Park fit in that well because it's the, it's the dinosaur plane it yeah was the dinosaur, first plane it's the dinosaur that, part of that it, it's the it's the first plane it's the first place magic ever went where dinosaurs were considered like a, an official creature type because you had and dinosaurs so, you had old school dinosaur cards they were, they were called they're called beasts they creature no, I know, type I know, dinosaur I, did not exist before I am surprised that we didn't get like functional reprints or not functional reprints but like I'm surprised they didn't give us like pygmy allosaurus but they like ratted all form? of them. They all they were ratted to be dinosaur. I believe. Okay, Pygmy Allosaurus is a dinosaur. Say words and I can't follow. What is a a ratted? A, a rata a rata is they um, went back and old cards. The rules text were changed with the, to them in like the official rules. So like if you look at the card, it says creature type beast. But if you look on like wizards.com, look up the card, it'll say like. Dinosaur? Creature type dinosaur now. It'll it'll have like a little like it's it would be like it would be like if we had like ice rope and ice hoop and then we made a ball that had like ice film in it or something. It's a running and change. then and then years later it became the ice ball and it was errated to be part but of the is ice that line. A word that exists outside of magic. Yeah, it's like a legal term. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a thing that'll happen sometimes also when you're looking at an old card and you're reading it and it like doesn't make a lot of sense. And then you can look it up the actual text, like not what's printed on the card, but like the legal text that the card means. And sometimes there's been like an errata to change it so that it's not so confusing. Because like magic in the 90s had like words that didn't make any sense on cards. Yeah. And I think I think like they just have to it's a it's a way for them to update stuff. Uh, but yeah, so so the reason the reason that this was so 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 what's happened is magic the gathering is now adding out of universe product so today's episode is the universe is beyond review we're going to be reviewing a bunch of the jurassic park themed cards from the movies um and discussing what they do what they not do if we're excited by them how we feel they are as like a dinosaur product like how they how they feel as a jurassic park card but the reason they're happening on this set is this is the dinosaur play like if if wizards was to ever do a dinosaur themed thing when they're doing it on Ixalan is the place that it's at. Dinosaurs and pirates are like the big two things. Are we pre-show or are we real show? This is real show. This is real show? I'm real show. I've been, so, I've, been, I've been so casual this whole time. Yeah, well, welcome to the casual. Put your, put your recording voice on, Ben. <laughs> yeah, let's You're get the old-timey, old-timey. <laughs> let's get the old-timey. Uh, well, I, I think, I think if we're being on it. <laughs> uh, report on the Western Let's get some uh, dinosaurs for those, going. For those just joining, make sure they hit that subscribe like button. We're going to be talking about Jurassic Park things <laughs> and uh, hit that notification bell. Uh, and we're the National Modern Podcast. We're talking about modern Magic the Gathering, um, competitive content in general, everything from CDH to Pioneer to Modern, etc. Uh, and, and sometimes the Real Housewives of Bravo. And sometimes the Real Housewives of Bravo. Uh, and uh, it's important. It's important to to subscribe because that's how you get known when you get more content like this. Uh, also, make sure to follow on all the social media things, all the comments below. All right, Ben, are you ready for some Jurassic Park uh, themed cards? I'm going to actually share this link for you uh, so that you have an access. We're just going to go in order. We're going to review all these Jurassic Park cards. Are you ready? Look at them all. I open in my in my um, product that I've opened so far, which I haven't opened a ton, but. I did open an Owen Grady. He's the only one that I've opened so far. I don't think I own any of the rest yet. I don't think. Oh, there. Yeah, there we go. I see him. Uh, that's that's the Chris Pratt. Well, we'll have a conversation on how do we feel about Chris Pratt being in this stuff. Okay, wait. wait hold on. I, sorry, I have another I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna basic. Get you a chair so I have another basic knees. question. So are these so are these cards that have existed and we're putting new artwork on them, or are these like all new like? 
the like rules and stuff of the card are all new. So yeah, so so universes beyond can be both. This specific run is exclusively on brand new cards. Okay. So what they do oftentimes, what they do oftentimes with the universes beyond now is they'll make cards that are like Jurassic Park, Transformers, Walking Dead, and after a certain amount of time. Then they, they will then make the same card, functionally the exact same card, and they'll name it something that's more generic. Like Walking Dead stuff was very specific Walking Dead, and now there's versions that are zombie names, right? They're just like generic zombie names that relate to magic lore. Same zombie, card. Wizard of Innistrad, making zombies, yeah. and it was a Walking Dead card. So that's kind of their okay. thing they do now to like take those universes beyond products and then weave them back into the regular game so that folks who don't care about some of these universes beyond things get excited when they open you know, that thing that was previously like Andrew Lincoln on a card. And they're like, I hate that show. And then like they get the regular card. And they're like, oh, this card's dope. But as more and more universes beyond product happen, I would imagine that happening is a little less and only happening for cards that they feel like need to be reprinted because it's getting too expensive. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but like, for instance, with the Lord of the Rings set, there was both brand new cards, like the one ring mm-hmm. that was like made for that universe. But then they also took a bunch of old magic cards and like templated them into the universe of Lord of the Rings. Mm-hmm. So there was like, um, different like lands that are like classics were reformatted as like Minas Tirith or Rivendell or whatever. Okay. All right. So we're ready for, for first Jurassic Park card. First Jurassic Park card is uh, don't move three white, white sorcery, destroy all tapped creatures until your next turn. Whenever a creature becomes tapped, destroy it. So the idea is it's a fine wrath. I mean, from, from a, we, I guess we always should look at this from a modern perspective. First, this card's unplayable in modern. It's a, it's a cool card, uh, conceptually and flavor wise. It's very cool, but wraths that cost more than four in general aren't playable unless you're talking about really specific ones. And I think the initial, the front side of the tap component of this, I think the stipulation makes it unplayable. Yeah, I, cool think, I, think, I think like it's really flavorful, right? Like if yeah, destroy all creatures that have moved, and then if creatures move in the next turn, they get eaten by a T Rex. Classic yeah. Jurassic Park. I think that like. The biggest question I saw that was interesting was like the take backsies question. If mm-hmm. someone taps a creature into this, do you let them take it back or do you just force that creature to die and get eaten by a T Rex? Uh, I mean, I guess it depends what format you're talking about. If it's modern, they're definitely command, losing commander, a commander in, in commander. This, this, these cards aren't legal in modern. That's one thing I do want to also preface. These are, oh, these point are out, not, got it. Okay. So then I was, I was mistaken on my appraisal only. of that first card. Um, I would say that probably, again, it depends a little bit on the format you're playing, right? If you're talking about CDH or even challenging, I think it's different than like casual game at the store. I think if you're a casual game at the store, you probably let them take it back. It's always like a feel bad when someone does something like that. So I usually don't force people. What do you think? I don't think they can take it back. The dinosaur saw them. They get eaten. <laughs> it's ch- time to get chomped. They got All right. Eaten. Um, the next card is Ellie and Allen Paleontologist. Two green, white, blue, legendary creature, human scientist. Two, five. Exiled creature card from your graveyard. Discover X, or X is the mana value of the exiled card. Activate only as a sorcery. Exile card from the top of your library until you exile a non-land card with mana value or less. Cast it. It's basically Cascade. It's, it's birthing. It's like from your graveyard, Cascade into a new thing. Yeah, I mean, they're so from a commander perspective, it's a commander card that's cool, right? You can put giant things into your yard, and as long as everything is like the same, right? Like roughly the same, like if everything costs the same, so you'll always get max value. If you can put like a cool a drop oh, into your yard, I want to do the opposite. I want to do one drop. You want to, you want to, you want to discover your birds of paradise away so that you can get it to like balance or ancestral recall. Because remember, discover is cascade. Oh, it's it's any so card. This, it's not this lets you exactly. cascade one non land card. Oh, okay. I, I didn't catch that. I was thinking it had to be creature. Um, no, you exile a creature card from your river, but you discover into a not in, in, into a non land card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. So you can so so then so then okay. If you're all creatures except for the few, few like few free things you want, you can get like rhinos and you can get like ancestral and stuff like that. Yes, yes, correct. You you get the pl- you can make a bant cascade modern deck but yeah it seems it seems fun in commander it seems like a cool thing you could do uh not overly powerful but i mean definitely seems cool right like i, I think it, i think the fact that you like get the cast balance you could just have a deck that cast balances maybe not fun <laughs> yeah but ba- you can also just play a deck that just plays balance 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 is banned in commander ben 
Oh, you can't play balance commander? I'm just making mistakes left and right. Whitney, you see how hard I'm getting dunked on by Alex? Twice in the last five minutes. Unbelievable. I think we're overlooking the one thing that we're all thinking, though. Is that uh, are Ellie and Alan dating? Because that was never confirmed. Does Laura Dern <laughs> know she's made it onto a magic card? That's a good question. Does I, I feel like this is something I don't know. I don't know if lightness rights and like how that's functioning here. It definitely, well, that is definitely Laura Dern. And I know from the Doctor Who set that every one of those actors had to sign off on their likeness to be on the card. Okay, so I would imagine, okay. that given Laura that it's the same thing, Laura Dern yeah. had to sign off for her likeness to be used on this magic card. Yeah, so Isn't yes. Isn't that cool that Laura Dern <laughs> was like, put me on this magic card? I feel like I want to build this deck partially just because I have a Laura Fern shirt. Yeah. Mm. That I can you wear do. while playing this you card. Do. <laughs> can we just take a quick pause for a second to acknowledge that there's actually only one good Jurassic Park movie? Like, there I know there are other Jurassic Park movies that are interesting, and at least some of uh, some of The Lost World, I'm a, like definitely enjoy the first hour of that movie a lot. There's parts of Jurassic World, the first Jurassic World, that I think are enjoyable, but actually, Jurassic Park, which is a flawless, perfect, top 20 movie, maybe top 50 ever made, like a 10 out of 10 movie is incredible after that you don't have a good movie there's not a single other good jurassic park movie. i mean i said this earlier i'm a lost world apologist i think actually the whole movie of lost world is great i think like the last 20 minutes of the two-hour movie where they're in san diego is not as good as the rest of the movie is but even then like compared to the missteps of the later jurassic park movies it's like hands and above but better it's kind of like the opposite of whatever the second jurassic world movie was Oh, yeah, where like the first oh, no. 20 minutes of the movie are great if if they had made jurassic park the movie where a volcano explodes on the island and that is the movie yeah great love that would watch oh, no, that movie Fallen kingdom right dominion was the third one Dominion's the worst jurassic park movie. the last I one they made it's the only Jurassic park movie i haven't seen and it's horrific like actually a horrifically yep. bad movie makes sense so. uh all right so so i do need i do need uh whitney um Nine out of t- well, one out one to ten. How would you rank Ellie and Alan paleontologists as magic card? Is that a scene from an actual the actual movie? Uh, no, they're just kind of doing a thing that they do technically because they're paleontologists. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, yes, I like it. Although it makes me think of the scene with the dinosaur where they go and like. Oh, oh, this is like the T, the, the yes. uh, uh, not T Rex. Stegosaur? The, 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 is this a Stegosaur? No, no, yeah. no. It was a Triceratops. Triceratops. The Triceratops. Yeah. 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 Sick one. Okay. That wasn't a one, that wasn't a one through 10 rating. I need like a. I didn't answer the question today. I, well, it's hard because I haven't seen the other card. I mean, that one probably gets a 10 because Laura Dern made card. it onto a magic card. Yeah, yeah. So that's pretty cool. What about Don't Move? I need more. Tiny arms from well, the T Rex. Oh, yeah, it's hiding the tiny arms. That's fair. Mm. All right, next we're going to Ian Malcolm Chaotician. One mm. blue red legendary creature human scientist. Whenever a player draws their second card each turn, that player exiles the top card of their library. During each player's turn, that player may cast a spell from among the cards they don't own, exiled with Ian Malcolm Chaotician, and mana of any type they spent to cast it. Uh, two, it's a two, two. My, my issue with this card is that the actual gameplay of this card sounds miserable. Like chaos gameplay experiences like this i've like never had a actual good time while it's happening amazing flavor you know you got you got the an actual chaos card for the chaos math man himself yeah, uh, right. so so the cat that, that that i'm here for and i don't even hate the like the, the the card looks great it's just yeah i'm i don't ever want to play with this card which makes me sad because i would love to build an ian malcolm deck you i would agree to yeah it's tough gold bloom I know it's just you have room. to. This is then your request. Or what, Ben? Or what are your thoughts on? <laughs> um, I mean, I like obviously this being is it. You know, this is my favorite color combo. Um, I like that it's inexpensive. Uh, draws their second card each turn, right? So that's a that's an effect they've they've templated into blue red pretty well. Um, I guess during each player draws their second card of each turn, that player is. Oh, 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 gotcha. This the effect works for everybody, which is why it's during each player's turn. I didn't catch that. Um, yeah, the randomness of it is not as fun. Anytime, anytime it's like an uncontrollable effect, I find 
when you can't manipulate the deck build to take advantage of something and it's just kind of random, it doesn't do it for me. I'm like never the biggest fan of that. So I'm kind of with you on on that one. But I mean, there's value, right? There's like there's it's sweet that the, the exiled cards stay exiled so that you just you get an extra card every single turn. Yeah, I mean, it turns it turns all also all of your like howling mind, like doing a howling mind effect deck with this card, like you're going to cut through everyone's deck really quickly and start like you each person ostensibly draws five cards a turn is like kind of an insane value play. It's just that's happening for everyone. So I think like the way to make this good is to create like really annoying stacks effects where it's just like for other players to be able to use the card you're making for them, they kind of can't. And then you get to, um, which is a way to make this card good. Uh, it just is also going to make everyone like, it's like you're miserable if you do, if you're miserable, if you don't. Right. Which is, I think, I think where my like issue with the card is. I, I think it's interesting that they haven't leaned deeper or further into the you may cast this card from exile template um like miss hollow griffin is that that three three from i think it's gavison restored from years ago and then torrent elemental was one they tried but they haven't come up with a lot of like things that when you exile this it just says on the card itself no matter how you exile it it's just I, you can cast that card from exile it's because those cards are so weak it feels like they would have tried more things because it feels to me like if there was some set where like you know it was like like just like blue one instant draw card. And it's, you may cast this card from exile, that kind of a thing. Like, cause obviously it still works with any of the like blue, red, you know, um, what's the card everybody likes the, the blue, red exile three. I can't think of the name of it. It's great. But the, any of those blue, red cards that say, or the blue red cards that are like exile the top two until your next turn, you may play these cards. Like that effect is used constantly. Right. And you do have things that allow you just like this, when you exile to get value out of that. But I think one of the spaces that I'm confused, you haven't seen more of is, you know, cards that say you may cast this from exile on the card. I'm wondering yeah, I why. Think, I think my like only theory on that is that they're basically just going to be, the times they've done it before, they've either been like very unexciting or with like weird chances of going infinite in weird ways. Maybe they don't like like it doesn't do anything really or it does something that's broken. Like those are your only two corner cases where it's useful. And maybe they're just sure. like, why play around in this space if it's dangerous? They've they've done more of it, though. I think there's a squee that you can cast from exile. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 that was a few years ago. They did a squee. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Like there, there's, there's three there's or four cards. cards. Yeah, yeah, there, there are some stuff they do. They play around with it. It's just, it's, I don't think it's like that good to like go too hard into, and they yeah. may be worried if they go too hard. All right. Speaking of, speaking of, um, you know, the good Jurassic Park movies, uh, Indominus Rex Alpha, one blue, black, blue, black, green, green. Legendary creature dinosaur. Me oh, wait, wait. First, Winnie. It's 10 out of 10 scale. Ian Malcolm. I mean, I dropped gold bloom cards pretty cool, I feel like. Yeah. As cool as Laura Dern? No. So, like, a, not 8 out of 10. Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. Indominus Rex. <laughs> also, Ben said he didn't like it, so. Wow, okay. So you're at <laughs> higher points if Ben doesn't like the card. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's got a random effect. <laughs> That's what she seems such a troll to our listeners. Yes, I feel trolled by Whitney. In case you're feeling that right now, it's too find, random. It's too go random. Go find a map of a modern Reddit thread and start a thread about who is this girl <laughs> trolling Bateman on the show? Yeah, I feel it, okay? He, um, well, I mean, okay, but when you think about Jeff Goldblum, he's sort of a, um, like his character's kind of unpredictable. He's sort of. Right, like he's a, a chaotic chaotic person. he's a chaotic person. So I mean, that would make sense. The card. Yeah. Yep. That's the. Uh, Indominus Rex, one blue, black, blue, black, green, green, legendary creature dinosaur mutant six six. Uh, as it enters the battlefield, discard any number of creature cards. It enters the battlefield with flying counter on it. If a card discarded with this had flying, the same is true of first strike, double strike, death touch, extra haste, indestructible, lifelink, menace, reach, trample, and vigilance. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card for each counter on it. Uh, so famously, the Indominus Rex was like a dinosaur they made by smushing all of these other dinosaur DNA into one new super dinosaur. Um, and it's a hybrid. Is that, an, is that a car? Is that a already a magic card? No, this is brand new. Oh, okay. Why did you think Every it was already a card? It's, it, its name sounds like it would be a card, but this is this is from the movie. This is the bad guy from okay. Lost World. From no, from the, no, from 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 Jurassic World. Jurassic World, Jurassic World. Sorry, yeah, sorry. yeah. He's the one. He, he has, he's the one that has to maybe fight. Not, the, maybe I'm just thinking of the movie. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's he has to magic. fight the T Rex at the end <laughs> of the movie. So there's a couple um, things about this card that are cool, in my opinion, right? I think the first thing is obviously it's very powerful uh, in the sense that you have some things that have lots of abilities on them that if you were to discard to this, are, like you get massive payoff, right? You definitely have like the big, big, big payoff. And in terms of if you're playing this in commander, as your commander, as your, if it's your five drop, like ramping into this and discarding like a couple awesome things to it, um, or even one awesome thing to it, it's a lot of value. It's like super sweet. And you can have the fact that Hexproof is on there, right? Because that's one of the ones when I first read this where I was like, okay, but is Hexproof on the card? It's like the fact that Hexproof is on there does mean you can create a pretty beast, pretty hard to deal with thing really fast. Because five in Commander is not that crazy. I mean, especially if you're talking about uh, you know, Crypt isn't going to get you there as fast because it has, only has one colorless pip, but you know, there's plenty of ways to ramp this out, I think, really quickly and get a lot of value out of it, which is cool. Well, and, and like, you know, you discard, like, there are a lot of really cool reanimate targets you can discard that have, like, adjacent random death touch or flying right. or, you know, uh, like, lifelink relevant abilities that you can just discard, put in your graveyard get a big like beating defensive threat that then draws you a few cards and then you can reanimate those other threats that you just discard discard. Yeah. I, I do like this card is like, it's a cool discard. Like it's not a card draw engine unless you're building around it. Right. Like you need to want to discard cards and every card you discard draws you a card. Otherwise this is just like a weird loot that gives you a flying beat down or not even flying necessarily, but a beat down stick. Um, right. But I think that, that it has, potential to be built in a way that i would love um i don't know if i like this much more than like just playing as mimeoplasm but i would i'm definitely throwing this into a mimeoplasm deck just because even if this is the card i use if i cast mimeoplasm and an exile indominus rex as the card now i'm gonna draw like 30 cards because every counter mimeoplasm enters on even plus one plus one counters count towards this number right so that that's the other way to kind of break it is just like Pretty good, how many yeah. plus one plus one counter things can you put in as it enters the battlefield? So I think isn't it's it a, kind of, a very cool card. Isn't it kind of reminiscent of one of the mutate uh, legendaries from Ikoria? Ikor- isn't there something that doesn't quite do this, but isn't there like something cool like that? There's, like, there's I'm, um, I'm forgetting what it, what her name is, but there's um, there's the leader of the Simic has evolved, like does this enters the battlefield, plus one plus one counter on it, draw a card. She, okay, she gotcha. Green, that, like that's that. like her, her same deal, right? She enters the battlefield with plus one, plus one counters equal to the low, highest power, I believe, of a creature you control. And then you draw cards for how many counters are on her, her power, something along those lines. So similar, similar ETB concept for sure. Uh, I will say, uh, of the fun. two versions of this that have been premiered, because there's like the cool special, um, you know, st- uh, Jurassic Stamp version you can get as well in packs. Yes. I do really like that because of the Jurassic symbol and how iconic it is. I think yeah. those versions will be really cool to get and collect. Uh, one thing I just <laughs> like the, the, the character of the Indominus Rex that's so funny. Anytime screenwriters have to describe why something that's the new evolved thing is like terrifying, they always do this thing where they ramp up to it and they're like, it's like the perfect combination of this and this. It only has the benefits and none of the downsides. Like uh, right. if you guys ever watch that movie Life, where they're they're like there's like that mutant that they're fighting, and I remember same thing where they're like, it's a perfect combination of smarts and strength. It's all muscle, all skill. And you're just like, <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like in the I feel like in Jurassic World when they're describing the Indominus Rex, they're doing like the same thing. They're like, it's not killing for survival, it's killing for sport or something like that. And like uh, well, and, it's just. And- they're they're always part cuttlefish like no matter yeah, what yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a it's a tiger and a gorilla and and a shark all in one and a cuttlefish <laughs> and a cuttlefish speaking right, of the map uh, you, uh indominus rex alpha any any one through ten score uh ditto to what ben said <laughs> ben, what was your score? <laughs> no, I, I, I'm into this one. This card seems breakable in a way that's fun to me. But then again, I've never played with a Mimeoplasm. That's some OG Commander stuff before I was into the format. So you're probably right because that card's really powerful. I, I, I think this card's a really cool card to put in the 99 of like these types of decks. I don't, and I think there's something cool to build around. I, I think it's a cool card. Indo Raptor, the perfect hybrid. One green, black, red. 
legendary creature dinosaur mutant bloodthirst x this creature enters the battlefield with x plus one plus one counters on it where x is the damage dealt to your opponents this turn menace in rage when it, the when this card uh, is dealt damage choose an opponent at random it deals damage equal to its power to that player unless they sacrifice a non-token creature it's a three one for three um I like this one a lot less. I like this one a lot less because I even like this movie a lot less. And I don't even love Jurassic World, <laughs> but uh, I hate this movie. And I hate this movie because everything around this specific dinosaur is terrible. Um, but from a from a like, uh, I want everyone to realize Jurassic Park is my favorite movie of all time. Top of the list consistently has been my whole life. I, I can not only quote the movie, I can quote the making of Jurassic Park VHS tape. Um, better than most rate other movies but uh so i'm not a jurassic park kid i love jurassic park i don't like this i also don't love this card like the fact that it does it at random whenever it deals damage and whenever i uh, like and they can get out of it by sacrificing a non-token creature i don't love like it, it does there's so many hoops you have to jump through for a like relatively medium effect that i'm just kind of like meh uh yeah it's like it, well it's also like the same two of the same three colors as um god why is my brain so much worse for remembering the names of magic cards than it used to be i used to be so good at this and you would forget stuff and i'd clown you on the show and i literally can never vile smasher the fierce it, it has uh, elements of vile smasher but vile smasher is just better because you can't prevent it and it only requires two colors and it just well, I don't know, but, card. So you get the two colors plus like you can you can build that with green right like that is not difficult yeah, i think do. the one thing about indoraptor that's cool is that bloodthirst um it's damage dealt to your opponents this turn right so there there is a world in which this card is huge which sure. also means there's a world in which this card is one-shotting people like right like if they don't have something to sacrifice and you have I, I mean, I guess like a thing to think about is like this is a three drop, right? How many how many cheap effects are there that are parallel deal like five to every player? Like you know, or like, like the card Flame Rift is. I mean, this is a bad example of a card, but like it's you know red one for you know deal four to all players, right? Which means that for two mana, you're getting twelve counters on this thing if you can cast that just before you cast this. Like there's a version of this card being enormous for very very cheap that then makes the secondary effect huge like it makes yeah. the secondary effect if you can't sacrifice something you're probably just going to lose when i do this well I, I like yeah i guess i guess like the cool thing to do with this is um anything that does like x damage to every creature and every player right yeah. like any of those effects where if you can wipe the board and do six damage to each player you can now have this enter and then if you can figure out a way to get it to be enraged you can you wipe the board, right? So now, now it's more one player is going to die if you have a big way to wipe the board and then play this and then do an enrage trigger. Um, I that that I, I don't disagree with is is a cool, or even just having the yeah is is a cool cool way to you think about it. it. Think about it from the perspective of on turn five in a game of commander. We'll even say turn four if you're going to ramp into this, but let's say on average turn five, probably at that point. You have three opponents, each of which probably has three non-basic lands. Maybe more. It could be everybody's got five, right? But probably everybody you're playing against has at least three out of their five lands that are non-basic. Which means you could price of progress easily. You can just easily prop. And then this card is going to come down. And if everybody has three, it's going to come down with 18 plus one plus one counters for nothing other than the casting of price of progress first. Like, that's pretty good. <laughs> this, sure. you can, your commander can be pretty enormous. So I, I do think there's cool stuff here, but I would agree that the uh, clause that they can sacrifice a non-token creature is uh, makes this a lot worse. Yeah, yeah. Um, Whitney, rating one out of ten for the Indo Raptor. Well, I strongly agree with Ben. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, this one feels less exciting. Four. Four out of ten. All right. Uh, next is Dino oh, DNA. Yeah. Uh, one mana for an artifact. Um, and print one tap exile target creature card from a graveyard. Activate only as a sorcery. Six mana create a token that's a copy of target creature card exile with Dino DNA. Except it's a six six uh, green dinosaur creature with trample. Activate only as a sorcery. 
spared no expense, uh, Ben. Uh, how do you feel about this little amber amber egg? I, for me, it's like pretty great graveyard hate. I mean, it's sorcery speed, which is definitely works, but like it's actively there. You can just kind of be using it over time. Actively great is a strong word, maybe like okay graveyard hate, but main deckable graveyard hate in commander that has a really cool secondary ability. We can just start popping off tokens if you get something really powerful. I would say from the from the perspective of needing to actually be a good card. The fact that it's sorcery speed is a really big restriction. It makes this yeah. card a lot worse. Like yeah, I agree. to the point that like in casual commander, these types of effects are less important. In competitive commander, you need this to be instant speed. So it sits in between those two ideas a little too much for my taste. And six to get a copy is pretty expensive. I mean, you have to be exiling something pretty good for six to be worth your time. Um, my one comment on this, just based on the art, is how is this not just a Mox Amber reskin? I don't know, like, I don't know what they were thinking that this is like not the best possible, possible thing they could have done. If they were going to do something to do with the Amber, how is Mox Amber not just this? I mean, like, that doesn't that I seem think, crazy? I think to me, it's possibly just because Mox Amber was in the packs of literally last year's, this time of year's set as the Chase Mythic. I mean, by, yeah, by their standards, they do that in every other set. So why not? But yeah, that's, you're right. It, they shouldn't be doing valid. it. You're right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they're reprinting like everything else in back to back sets. I mean, I'm not happy they're doing it, but like, yeah, but I, but that, that's fair. All right, Winnie, one out of 10 scale. Okay. Okay. I've been laughing to myself, which is probably not that funny, but it does kind of look like Santa Claus is about to eat like a bug or something. <laughs> 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 He's like really staring at that at that mosquito. Throw the dinosaur. Shame on you! Shame He's on you! He's contemplating man. all the life loss to do the the folly of his capitalistic nightmare island created. Sir Lord Richard Attenborough is offended. Do you know this is a real thing? By the way, um, that I'll keep the story very very brief. But as you guys remember, I used to do the movie trivia showdown, and it was like very competitive. And there was an era where in the last few years where it got so competitive that we all started, they implemented a challenge rule. You would get one challenge in a match. And because just like any sport, like you get your, your thing you get to use. If you don't use your challenge, it's useless. So progressively as it went on, people would challenge more and more absurd things just to see if they could get away with it. And I recall there was a live match in New York where they asked a question and the answer was Richard Attenborough. And the person answered, Sir Lord, Sir, Sir uh, Richard Attenborough. And the other guy said, challenge. He is uh, technically a lord at this point. It is Lord Richard Attenborough. And we had to litigate this on stage for like five minutes. It was like a very, very contentious thing. Not not to be, uh, it was outdone years later when I challenged that somebody's answer of Elvis. I said, challenge. He didn't specify which Elvis. That could be any number of Elvises. And they're like, I think it's pretty obvious it's Elvis Presley that he's referring to. I was like, I don't know. I'd like, uh, I'd like to call a line judge on this one. A real scumbag move on that one. So anyway. So what was is he a lord? I think he's a lord, not a sir. And I they rewarded the points. They 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 allowed the fudge of sir versus lord. I feel like I think lord is a more prestigious title. No, it or is. Did you, get, it is. you 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 inherit lord. You are you become like you earned the sir. You are given, you are born with the lord title. Yeah, something you might, I you might be able to buy a lord title, possibly. Like you're saying things you don't really know. <laughs> I don't. Commenters, please comment. <laughs> British, British dukedom rules. Uh, all right. <laughs> Next card is Cresting Mo Mosasaurus. Uh, six blue, blue creature dinosaur. Emerge six blue. Make has a spell for sacrifice a creature and paying the emerge cost reduced by that creature's mana value. When Cresting Monosaurus enters the battlefield, it cast it, return each non dinosaur creature to its owner's hand. Four, eight. We got a emerge dinosaur uh, cyclonic rift on our hands, uh, and he's ready to eat a shark. Uh, and and that really like that is remember the discourse uh, on the assistant who died in Jurassic World. It's like she's one of the few named characters in the entire show, and it kind of was like, wait, I don't think this girl like portrayed anything about herself that felt like she deserved to die. Oh, she gets the eaten death. by the, yeah, yeah. She, yeah, like she the gets eaten by the flying creature, like, right? The, 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 the flying dinosaurs, like, grab her. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And toy with <laughs> her and, like, torture her. And then they drop her in the mouth of this giant shark dinosaur. Yeah. And it, like, kills her. And it's kind of like, 
this feels like a death deserved for like asshole characters that like have shown over the show they're a bad person and this is just like had to babysit two kids of her boss and was like kind of overworked <laughs> you know that i have i think you know this but the audience might not know this and it's relevant that jurassic world when they made that movie it was directed by a guy named colin trevorrow who had done Trevorrow, who had done like an indie movie. And it just so happened in 2015 when the movie came out that the bar I was working at, we had just started doing our podcast. and My friend Matt had worked on the film. Trevorrow and his editors came in for dinner to the bar I was working at, and he had made these custom Simpsons art prints of every character from Jurassic World. And they all were signed by Trevorrow. And there was 12 of them total. And I talked to him when he was there at the restaurant and I was like, yeah, you know, we're just started this podcast. Like you work with my buddy, Matt. He's like, oh, that's so cool. And then on the way out, he and his friends were hell at a great time. And we were like, thank you for coming in. And he looked at his buddy and he went, just give it to him. And his buddy was like, what? And he's like, just give it to him. So he gave me this. I feel like we're really pulling out some deep things from this evening oh wow oh that's cool that is cool so it's like actually every character and they've been simpsonified and it's one of 12 in the world and it was made by trevorrow for his editors and he gave it to drew and i and uh, we had to like rock paper scissors for who got to keep it and i framed it and put it on my wall and this is like my cool piece of memorabilia from jurassic world I i feel like i've never told you this alex no yeah, it's like a pretty wild thing, right? That's Access up here to the left yeah, of the yeah. computer. Wow. There you go. Fun facts. Yeah, right? That's really fun. Um, he was like, just promise me you'll do something cool with it. I think we showed it on the show, then it went on my wall afterwards. But I've never sold it, so I feel good about that. You know, I've had yeah. it this whole time. <laughs> and we and, um, and join on this. Now it's relevant to all of the podcasts. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Um, Mark, Mark. 37 minutes you know yeah come I back think, here i think uh i think this card's really cool i mean i feel bad for that assistant but i think this card's like actually pretty sick yeah i agree i um emerge is one of my favorite keyword abilities from any set in a long time it's yeah. a it's a it's an ability i really like i think it's super flavorful and i tend to really like the effects and i'm somebody who enjoys the the value you get out of sacrificing something that you actually want to see go away. And so for me, this card is like just generally pretty sweet. Now the issue with this card is that if you're not emerging it, it's a little bad. Like it costs eight. It's very expensive. So if you can't, if you can't emerge it paying eight for non dinosaur creatures, but not even non, not, not even like just non land permanents. Like it doesn't have the, doesn't have the psych rift effect in that sense. And it's not, you don't control, right? It's all of it you lose yours as well so that makes it a lot worse for me but the fact that you can emerge it off of like tassiger or something um you know like like this this could just be in a tassiger deck couldn't it (laughs) and you just sacrifice your you just sacrifice your commander to just cast it but yeah i think i think if you have a six drop commander if you have a commander that is any cost reduction mechanic in blue i think this card's like heavily in consideration also any type of reanimator deck also in consideration right like if you're in a position where you need a board wipe and you just have like a four drop in play and you're able to like i don't think it's i don't think you're ever not casting it for the merge cost right but even just like if you have a like a three or a four drop in play if you have a four drop in play this costs three mana right like you don't have to i mean the the fact that it's not when you cast it that it's when an etbs is really strong they've they've templated that differently over the last few years to protect against some of the really strong etbs but uh the fact that this is etb is really is really and and you end up with the card right like you you get the keep it it is only creatures, but you still have a four eight, right? This yeah, doesn't right, right. get bounced. Um, so I think there's there's value there. Uh, spinning Dilophosaurus, uh, two black creature dinosaur. Whenever spinning Dilophosaurus enters the battlefield, or attacks with a minus one minus one counter on up to one target creature. Creatures your opponents control with minus one and minus one counters on them can't block three two. Um, Are we in agreement, Alex, that Dilophosaurus is both of our favorite dinosaur? No, no, no. I'm a I'm a brachiosaur, the little brachiosaur long neck. But I do I do have a full body, in fact, Dilophosaurus costume. So I've seen that before, and I believe I've even uh, perhaps yeah, tried it on. But Dilophosaurus, just an absolute classic, Whitney. I think you would agree, Dilophosaurus, strong dinosaur, at least top three. Yes, and that's a pretty classic scene from the movie. Indeed, it is. Indeed, uh, it is. So they, just they, uh, 
just be aware, Ben, that if you have a minus one, minus one counter, I can't block anymore. Um, so, I feel like we should have started here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is, you know, hindsight, mean, hindsight, I mean, I hindsight. Hindsight would be 2020 if you guys didn't have tar in your face for me spitting all over them. Um, Whitney, I honestly will tell you that after 10 years of the podcast, there's at least two or three instances I can think of, of Alex wearing this costume on the podcast. It's not a first. Yes. We've, yeah. we've been down this road. <laughs> yeah, we've been down this road. We've been down this road before. Uh, or you would have been if the sign didn't get messed up by the rainstorm as you're trying to get the boat mm-hmm. and steal all of my embryos. Um, I think this card, as far as a card goes, is just like very good at every minus one, minus one counter deck. Um, because those decks kind of really love this type of effect, being able to make all your creatures unblockable. Um, uh, I think its first ability is like kind of whatever, but it's kind of cute and like allowed for kind of what it's trying to do. Uh, iconic scene for Dennis Nedry got Butterfingers. Uh, work. yeah, yeah, the artwork on this card is amazing, great. actually. The art's great. Um, it this in foil is gonna look really gorgeous. I really like I really like the look of it, and I can already tell with the colors it's gonna look really awesome. We don't know yet, right? Like, actually, no, we do know. We do know. There's no there's no surge foils in the set, but the but the full art borderless foil is gonna look really really gorgeous. Um, and then yeah, I think I think uh, flavorfully the second ability is really it's on brand, which is cool. So um, I I like that. Uh, but yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot else we have to say about this card. Is Lophosaurus really your favorite dinosaur? Um, I mean, I would say that like, so Jurassic Park was a movie I liked as a kid. It like definitely was not obviously my only introduction to dinosaurs as any kid loves dinosaurs. Um, you know, we all kind of do. Um, and I think when you're a little kid, like you kind of have like every little kid loves, you know, the, the, the Tyrannosaurus Rex and the Velociraptor first because they're like terrifying and these big like monster creatures. And then, you know, you learn to appreciate all the different dinosaurs and the flying ones and everything. So I think as I got older, uh, I think as I got older, probably there's like a there's like a penchant for Jurassic Park and then specifically the Dilophosaurus and how iconic the scenes are, and how cool looking it is. I don't know, like being like the Lost Raptors, my favorite is kind of a cop out. So I, I do feel like it's probably the Dilophosaurus. I'm a I'm a okay. fan. Okay. It's a good, yeah, it's a good, it's a good favorite choice. Uh, yeah. Um, hunting Velociraptor, two, two red dinosaur, first strike. Din- Hashtag team Ben. Uh, first strike. <laughs> dinosaur spells you cast have prowl, two red. You may cast oh, that's pretty sick. for its prowl cost. If you dealt combat damage to a player this turn with a creature, uh, with any of its creature types. That's like really, really sick. The fact that for three mana, this is not legendary, so it can't be your commander. But is, if it's just in your dinosaur, like, doesn't this just mean you can cast like Gishath or like any of the giant elder dinosaur titans for three mana if you just deal damage? Uh huh. Like, pretty sick, right? Yeah, this card's really good. <laughs> <laughs> this card's like quite good. I think, like, a yeah. staple in every dinosaur commander deck ever printed. Yeah. You just play it. Especially because it's you may cast. Um, uh, it doesn't have to be from your hand, so you can cast your commander, which like the best dinosaur commanders are all like nine drops, right? So this just like cheats things into play. How uh, much does Gishoth cost? Eight? Eight or nine, one or the other. Oh I God. never really yeah, yeah. it just always shows up and I'm like, oh I don't I don't know how to do with that. <laughs> Isn't Polyraptor like an eight drop too? I mean like Yep. Yep. Yeah. Hard, hard there's, definitely, there's definitely some sick. Yeah, you can definitely do cool stuff with this. card's really good. Um Speaking of Velociraptors, we have Owen Grady, Raptor Trainer, one red green, legendary creature, human soldier scientist, partner with Blue Law Raptor, which I'll read in a second. Put tap Tappa Owen, put your choice of menace, trample, reach, or haste counter on target dinosaur. Activate only as a sorcery, three, two. And then you have Blue Royal Raptor, two blue green, legendary creature, dinosaur, partner with Owen Grady, Raptor Trainer, so they can partner with each other. They're best friends. For each kind of counter on blue, each other dinosaur you control enters the battlefield with the same type of counter of that kind on it. 5-4. So it's a 4-mana 5-4. Uh, basically the idea is you play Owen on 3, you untap, you play uh, Blue the next turn, you can then tap Owen to put a Menace, Trample, Reach, or Haste counter on Blue. Often that turn probably Haste. And then on the next turn when you play Dinosaur, um, when it enters the battlefield, it also gets that type of counter because you're putting them on, on, on Blue. Um, as far as like cool combo, these cards are cool. 
as far as the fact that we now have Chris Pratt on a magic card, he's now joined. He's now been. He's in the. He's in Mario. He's in Lego. He's now in Magic the Gathering. He's now what? What uh, toy product? What comp? What Mattel product is Chris Pratt going to end up in next? I mean, he's also the voice in Lego. I mean, there's a lot going on with Chris Pratt. Um, he's he's uh, yeah. I mean, th- th- this card's fine. Uh, the combo of the two cards is fine. It- it's. For me, as a Simic and an Is It player, classically, it's about as unexciting of a like. I just it's cool, and I'll and I'll enjoy watching people make this work, but it doesn't feel flavorfully Simic or Is It at all. It feels like very, very, very distant from what I expect out of those colors. There's nothing about it that it doesn't it doesn't embody oh. any of the things in those colors that I think I'm like used to. I think I think for Gruel. I don't know if I agree with that. I mean, for, for, for teamer, the, like the red green ability of like adding these specific keywords to a creature feels very red green. And then for blue green, like mutating other creatures to make them kind of similar to your genetic thing seems very blue green. So I I don't know if I totally agree that these abilities don't feel hard draw. There's no ramp. There's no lands. There's no do things other than those exact. (laughs) <laughs> yeah i mean I, I i don't like i said i think it's cool i think that the play pattern you described of three going into four is cool and i think if you're heavy dinosaurs you can have some fun with this it's just just not as much my favorite as some of the others just g- generically it feels a little loose my, my issue i think is more is like in a similar note but i just like don't care about like keyword tribal or keyword yeah. keyword synergy decks right i don't like the like I, I haven't liked uh uh I don't, I don't remember the the white vampire's name but the the guy who like cares about how many different keywords different creatures have yeah, or whatever yeah, yeah. like that that design space has never been like super fascinating to me I love the idea of those type of counters just like I wish it I wish there was a little bit something more uh to it for sure Are you uh, happy with the 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 post Icoria keyword ability counters are you happy with them i love those i think that mechanic is stunning Uh, um and uh as a pun with the fact that one of the more recent ones were stun counters um i think it's a great great idea that works really really well my issue is more like as a like as the end goal is just creating creatures that have all of these keywords that doesn't seem interesting to me the stuff that's like you draw cards for how many counters are on them or you know you get some other type of benefit based on how many counters are on something that's always been more interesting to me yep yep that works oh uh, Winnie, how do you feel about uh are we like skipping around yeah we're skipping around i really want to talk about the next card this one look- no <laughs> this one no this one no this one go back down this guy Alex, yeah. let Whitney respond on the on owen grady and well, i want to know what your thoughts are on chris pratt being on a magic card it's weird it's weird it's weird it's weird yeah I don't know. I feel like he's like someone that they've like tried to make like a excuse me for saying nerd hero, but he's not. I don't know. Sure, sure. I think think think, who did he break? Who was his ex wife? Oh, that's a whole nother thing. Yeah. There, there, there's Anna Ferris. There's the thing, yeah. Alex, that you're sort of alluding to, which is that there was like some pretty negative backlash on Chris Pratt that you if you the deeper you dig, the like, I think a little less offensive it is, but there's still no taking away from the general offense of it, which is not great. And I also think on some level. His face is tiny on this magic card, and it's almost like barely him. You, if you like look closely, it's him, but it's not the same as like yeah. Laura Dern and. Sam Neill or like Sam Jackson's on a car or Jeff Goldblum. It's like very clearly their faces. I think a little bit on some level, the like smaller his face here is probably a reaction to exactly what we're talking about. That quick glance, it doesn't totally look like Chris Pratt. In some ways, it makes me like, like you mentioned that everyone got the likeness rights. In some ways, it made me feel like he was like, oh, I don't want to be on a magic card. <laughs> if you like, if you zoom in, I just did it. I just went 200% yeah, I was on my say, browser. Can you zoom in? Not, not, uh, not. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's definitely him. Like I definitely yeah, just yeah, look definitely closer. Him. Well, actually, no. Now that I'm looking closer, is it though? Oh, that it's does look weird. weird. Yeah. It. Oh, it looks more like Luke. Ev- it looks more like Luke Evans. Not really. Not 
really be him. <laughs> did they did they recast Chris Pratt with Luke Evans on the Magic card? I don't know. It it's Luke like- Evans playing Owen Grady in the Magic Universe. That's not. I don't think that's Chris Pratt. It's hardly him. That like that's really what I'm saying. Doesn't like, look like, like him. Reg- like I've also heard like he's a jerk to interviewers and like other people like service staff. <laughs> like I think like I don't know. Uh, I'm I'm allegedly allegedly allegedly. I've heard. Uh, you know. Uh, all right. Next, we're gonna p- talk about permission denied. Yeah, I want to uh, talk uh, about oh, this card. You forgot to say the magic card. And then word. I might have to go to bed because I'm sleepy. But yeah. this card looked interesting to me. Uh, this is blue and a white. Uh, instant counter target non creature spell. Your opponents can't cast non creature spells this turn. Uh uh uh. You didn't say the magic word. Uh uh uh. Uh, and we have um, Samuel Jackson on the magic card. Is this is this is his first universes beyond appearance on a magic card, correct? Because we haven't gotten the Marvel set yet, or the Star Wars set that's eventually coming, where he will one hundred percent be Mace Windu. And like Alex, when 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 the Star Wars set does eventually come, which we know it will someday, uh, the number of Revenge of the Sith cards, <laughs> the number of Revenge of the Sith magic cards, and like I hope the number of like memeable Revenge of the Sith magic cards they decide to make, make it will make me so happy. Like. Agreed. Un- unbelievably happy in a way that like playing magic will be better for it, you know? Yeah. Anyway, sorry. So, <laughs> so, but what are your thoughts, Whitney? You are, I just here. like the artwork. The artwork's good. You got- <laughs> I really like the artwork. I like that there's a soda can like in the middle in the forefront. Because he got trash all over his desk. Yeah. <laughs> I like the energy of that car. It's a big phone. Like there's a big, you can't really see because it's behind the text yes. box, but there's a giant old style yes. office cell phone. Yeah. Is I'm this like, the first computer screen in a magic card? Like an old CRT TV computer monitor? Could be. It also, I mean, if, I don't know who you guys know who this is, but from a distance, before you look closely at the face that's on the computer screen, it looks like the basketball player Blake Griffin. Now, when I look closer, I, who that is. I saw him playing his first game on the Clippers. Thank you very much. Yeah. It doesn't look like him like when I zoom in, but from a distance, it looks like Blake Griffin. Um, I will say from a magic card perspective, Alex, there is one phrase that is missing on this card that I don't think would flavorfully be this character in this moment. But from a playability perspective would be the thing that should have been on here. And it should say split second. If it did. It would be really good and it would be a like last word type counter. But the problem with this card is silence works when you play it on your opponent's upkeep. When you're playing this in the second main phase after attack, often there's not a whole lot left for your opponents to want to do. Like sometimes there's a reaction free combat, but often players are going to wait for the last possible moment. So the second part of this card becomes kind of irrelevant and it feels like it loses its effect because you're having to wait for them to do something to react to then shut them off after where if this said split second you could imagine this in like cdh stacks where you do something i do something i play this counters your thing you can't respond and now my turn is open to win which is like what this would be cool if it were i just i just think like i still think it's cdh adjacently playable if not actively playable like if you get someone on like They've like just done an ad nas. They have all the cards in hand that they want to cast, and you can get them on casting a sorcery. They just like you just time walk them. I think that's like very powerful. But I, I agree that like the fact that it can be responded to with other instants does make it less exciting than you would want. Yeah, it just it just feels a little bit like the, there's there's a couple play patterns in which this card is usable, but there's a lot of play patterns in which this card feels useless. Is what it feels like to me. Um, we only have so many to go, Winnie. We can probably get, we can get you, we can get you through this. You got this. Oh, okay. I was going to say, I'm getting a little sleepy. Yeah. All right. So this is, I believe the last legendary creature that we at least have previewed as of today, because I don't see any additional ones. Uh, Henry Wu. And then I have comments on being sad that there's not a legendary creature. I do have a comment on swooping Pteranodon when we get there. All right. Uh, we can do that now. We'll do that first. Swooping Pteranodon. Three red, white creature dinosaur. Flying haste. Uh, whenever swooping pterodon, uh, pteranodon or another dinosaur with flying enters the battlefield under your control, gain control of target creature and opponent controls until end of turn. Untap that creature, it gains flying, haste, and until end of turn, and beginning of the next end step, target land deals three damage to that creature. So, swooping pteranodon grabs a thing, throws it at someone, <laughs> and then 
it hits the ground and the ground does three damage to it. Um target creature in opponent control. So the from a magic the gathering perspective, uh it sadly is target opponent controls, which means that you can't go infinite with Kiki Jiki. Yep. Uh, yep Whitney, yep, you yep. had specific things you wanted to say about this flying hasty uh flying dinosaur. Yes. Okay, wait. Is this the scene with the guy who's running with the margaritas? Yes, 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 it why is. Why didn't Jimmy we get the guy Jimmy with Buffett. the margaritas? I don't, I don't, why? Uh, Jimmy Buffett is not on a magic card, and Rest I in demand peace. more Rest from Rest in peace, Jimmy Buffett, card. right? There you go. Yeah. That's our moment. Yeah, he's not on this card, though. I don't think he's on this card. I, would, I don't want to... Zoom in. Yeah, we gotta zoom. Enhance. Enhance. We're, all right, all right, all right, all right. Enhance, enhance. Alex, continue enhancing. Just is there a guy in the back? Oh, no, Jimmy Buffett's not no. on here. No, that was, I feel like, a missed opportunity. Wow. You know, like, this card is kind of trash, I'll be honest. Uh, it's playable and fun, but I don't think it does much of what I want it to do. I think for the uh, call, oh, no, because there are red cards that just do more than this. Yeah, to, it also, it also says another dinosaur with flying. Is that a creature with flying? I would be a little more of, like like apt to get into this card, but you have to play flying dinosaurs. It just it just feels too specific. I just don't feel oh, like... Oh, it's another dinosaur with flying enters the battlefield? Oh, weird. It's like a it's dino- just flying dinosaur. It's really, 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 really specific. There's yeah, not enough dinosaurs. it's so specific. Yeah, because I, I, I don't think the payoff you're getting on a five drop is good enough that that's even like a necessary stipulation. This just feels underpowered, so... Yeah, I, th- I think also like it's trying to do too much. The whole like it gains flying and haste, and it, it, when it enters the battlefield, it, it like lands a land deals three damage. It's like really complicated for an effect that doesn't feel super flavorful. I, agree. I like don't know what a land dealing three damage to that creature is really gaining, other than like good flavor that makes it a little bit more complicated. Is it like um, is it like to do with the Mosasaurus? Like that's in the water, so like the land that drops it in the Mosasaurus mouth is that kind of the idea? No, no, no. It's picking a creature up and then dropping it onto the ground, killing it. No, no, but I mean, it's a, I get it, but in the scene where this happens, it drops the thing in the mouth of the Mosasaurus. Like, no, no, it drops the assistant that didn't deserve it in the mouth of the Mosasaurus. Right. They well, got I get other that, people but... and just dropped them onto the ground, and they, like, got hurt yeah. and or died. Fair enough. Savage. Uh, ravenous Tyrannosaurus. Four red-green creature dinosaur devour three. At the end of the battlefield, you may sacrifice any number of creatures. This creature enters the battlefield with three times that many plus one plus one counters on it for each of those creatures. Uh, one caveat there. When Ravenous Tyrannosaurus attacks, it deals damage equal to its power up to up to one other target creature. Excess damage is dealt to that creature's controller instead. Six six thing that's important. Uh, there's actually uh, there was a typo on this card. It's not uh, it's not this creature enters the battlefield with three times that many plus one counters for each of those creatures. It's just uh, this creature enters the battlefield with three times that many counters. Period. Um, it ends up uh. that there's two templating for Devour, and they included. The one that you would have included for Devour X and then Devour 3 and then accidentally didn't fix it. So there is a typo on the card, uh, which is fascinating because that means like the, it went through license or approval and they didn't catch a typo on a card, which is really interesting. But uh, I mean, there's still the idea in, where this, is a T-Rex. this is the T-Rex from the end of Jurassic Park, not a legendary the creature. Idea, the card comes down. It's a 6-6. Six, six. You sacrifice three creatures. You get from your three creatures, you get nine counters. Mm-hmm. You now have a 15 power creature that can attack, kill something, and then deal a bunch of damage to, but it's, but you have to deal, right, uh, attacks and deals equal to his power to up to one other target creature, excess damage result. So that means if there's no creature, you're just dealing full damage on attack, right? Like, that means that, that means if you sacrifice three creatures, this is a 15 power creature. I attack no, you. No, out. you I have, believe it doesn't do any damage. Like, you have to damage a thing. So that there is excess damage. Because, but it says up to one. Yeah, yeah. So if you don't do it, then oh, you'll be zero. I see, I see, I see. So, so, okay. So, so it attacks you. It I makes, kill it, your it makes it so you don't have to target himself or a creature you control. You have a five, five. I attack you. I kill your blocker. I get 10 through to you and then 15 still. So you take Correct. 25. So Correct. That, it's, it's cool and splashy and flavorful and beast, like beefy in that cool sort of way, yeah. which is fun. It doesn't feel overtly power. Like, like it doesn't feel like it's Six doing shot. like so much. It just feels fun and cool. It's a little weird that it's not legendary, uh, just because it's so iconic. But still a fun card. 
Yeah, I, I just wish it was legendary. I think it's my biggest complaint. Like, this is the main character, according to George, uh, not George, Lucas, according to Steven Spielberg of his own movie. This is the main character. Changed the ending last minute of the movie to make it so the T Rex arrived and showed up, even though it makes no sense because there's no door in that building for it to show up with. And does this isn't legendary? Isn't a legend? This is like a, one of the legendary moments of movie making history. Uh, next card is Henry Wu in Gen Genetics, blue, black, green. Budget creature, human scientist, Henry Wu, Ingen Geneticist, and other human creatures you control have exploit. Uh, whenever a creature with exploit enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice a creature. Whenever a creature you control exploits a non human creature, draw a card. If the exploited creature has power three or greater, create a treasure token one four. Uh, this is the other one people are commenting like they probably didn't get the likeness rights for because it's yeah. him facing away from the camera. I would agree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, or that's just the fact that he like wasn't in the middle six movies and was only in the first and the last two. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm just reading this to make sure that I understand it. So it's three men and one for. I mean, the fact that it has exploit is like funny, right? It's flavorful. Like, yeah, kind of yeah. A funny thing. Good, good, good flavor. Um, exploit. If you have it, power three or greater, create a treasure token. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um. This card seems fun, I guess, as a commander. It seems like it could be, it's it's inexpensive enough. There's enough like engine sort of stuff with it, but it doesn't feel pushed. Just just feels cool. Like a yeah. like, like a like a fun mid mid power. When you commander. cast when you cast a creature, uh when you cast a human, sacrifice a non-human, draw a card, and if it's a big non-human, also make a treasure token is like a cool ability to play around. Um it's it's like it's one of the like weird half your deck has to be humans, half your deck doesn't have to be humans. That always feels like to me that it'll never connect well. Uh, yeah. But he's a human himself, so that that helps. Um, uh, or Winnie, do you have any thoughts on Ravenous Tyrannosaurus or Henry Wu? Back. Mm. <laughs> uh whatever Ben said. Perfect. Thank nice, you. Nice, Whitney. Uh, She's no longer uh, trolling me, guys. We're we're. Cool. We're one one green and black compy swarm dinosaur two two at the beginning of your end step if the creature died this turn create a capped token that's a copy of compy swarm so as I've learned many times with cards that make copies of themselves off of triggers this is is going to get very large a lot of them very quickly um, sadly it's the beginning of your end step and not each end step I would agree yep that's the big, um, that's the big takeaway I mean if you're not messed with and you can take advantage of it. Uh, and these cl- the all stay alive and nobody messes with it. It will scale quickly. But again, from the perspective of like best case scenario, let's just say that you play like an accelerant on turn one, like a bird or something. And let's say this comes down on turn two. And also on top of coming down on turn two, you have some way to take advantage of the the, the payoff, right? Like mm-hmm. that's something, right? And so you start doing that. So that means that on at the beginning of your end step on Turn two, you get a second one. On turn three, you have four of these. On turn four, you have eight of them. And on turn five, you have 16 of them. So in a perfect world, you have 16 of these guys by the end of turn five. There's like a world in which that is possible. But to me, that's still like magical Christmas land because like 16 tutus in a game of commander, if you're like coming out perfect, people will mess with you. They'll kill things. And also they're just tutus. There's no payoff. There's no win the game. It's between four players. Like it, it just feels to me like it's very and Christmas land is a uh, is a part of the Disneyland parks. Uh, this is dinosaur land. Fair, 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 fair. And also, it doesn't have blue, which means that making clones and copies of it is not possible. So you're dependent on just doing the normal thing. I mean, you have stuff like parallel lives you can play in the context of that. And you yeah. have stuff like. Yeah, you know, like all the yeah. doubling season stuff. I think also copy swarm in like a Marin deck where you're just like sacrificing things every turn. So it's like a free end game. If you've been able to like spore frog the game to like turn 30, you now have like this has been just become a massive army. So I think there's playable features for this deck and it's like costed right. Uh, but I agree that it ha- you, you need to be doing something very specific with it. Um, all right, we have uh, one last dinosaur card. And this is this is uh, Grim Gigant Giganotosaurus, five green black creature dinosaur, ten ten, monstrous ten green black monstrosity ten. This ability Jeez. costs one less to activate for each creature with power four or greater your opponent's control. When Grim 
Gigantosaurus becomes monstrous. Destroy all artifacts and creatures other than Grim Gigantosaurus. Is this from the most recent movie? Uh, it's it's actually not Gigantosaurus. It's Giganotosaurus, Alex. G- Giganotosaurus. I know this because when Universal hired me last year to do that Jurassic World Dominion thing for them, I did a perfect job on my stream doing all the interviews, except when I got to the reading of this uh, in the rehearsal, I was like, Gigantosaurus, because there's a magic card called Gigantosaurus. That's a dinosaur. And afterwards, they were like, just so you're aware, it's um, Gigantosaurus. You saw the film, right? Or the Giganotosaurus. It's Giganotosaurus. And I was like, yes, I'll make sure I know that. So, um, so this is from the most recent one. So I haven't seen that movie. Uh, so I'm not going to take any responsibility for saying this wrong. And Whitney agrees with me. It feels like it has a million. How would you, how would you, say, how would you say that, Whitney? Grim, Giganotosaurus, Giganotosaurus, Grim, Giganotosaurus, Giganotosaurus, folks. That's the way it works. Giganotosaurus. Um, this car is cool. Uh, I'm, it's like so expensive. And the, the thing that it does that's cool is also expensive. The chances that I'm playing against enough opponents where they're going to have that many power four or graders to get this monstrosity ability to be relevant is really low. And the effect you get from it is fine. I, you, I guess you do get a 2020 that destroy uh, and the entire board of artifacts and creatures are dead. Um, I've actually, maybe this is a hot take. I like really don't like the monstrosity mechanic. I think like yeah, it's always kind of clunky. It's never good. It's committing way too hard to one creature that normally has to sit around and do nothing for a turn. Uh, Pulrukinos is lame. He said, you heard it here first. Uh, and this continues my thought there. And it is, I think even if you assume that you're curving out to seven mana, right? Black, green, five. The fact that you have to get to. Uh, Black, green, so let's just say that each opponent had one, right? Let's say each opponent had one, so now your your monstrosity of 10 is reduced to 7, uh, and you play a land, so now you have one more land. It still means that, like, best case scenario, you, you hit your 8th land drop, and each opponent has one creature of 4 or more, you could then curve out the next turn. But this is still assuming you have, like, that's like a lot of stipulations that are pretty bad like, yeah like you have yeah. to hit an eighth land and your opponents have to have threats for you to kill there's just not a lot of upside for this card like if they don't have it and you hit your land you still can't activate it the next turn i think this card sees play if it's a if it was a legendary creature i think the fact that this isn't legendary makes this like card basically unplayable yeah i would agree i would agree uh all right so the last card for tonight uh and then we'll be signing off and letting whitney go to bed who has been a trooper thank you for joining the podcast everyone uh whitney kessler um we're gonna be reviewing welcome to jurassic park uh one green green enchantment saga welcome to dot 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 uh one for each opponent up to one target non-creature artifact they control becomes a zero four wall artifact creature with defender for as long as you control this saga so you get to turn a uh one of their artifacts into a wall uh, you then, uh, for two mana, create a 3-3 three, three green dinosaur creature token with Trample. It gains haste until end of turn, but all your opponents have walls to block it. And then uh, for three mana, destroy all walls. Uh, so all of those, so you've destroyed all those non-creature artifacts. They're now, so so by the third round, you've destroyed all of them. And then you exile the target and Saga and return to the battlefield. It's formed to Jurassic Park, Legendary Land. Uh, each dinosaur card in your graveyard has escaped. The escape cost is equal to the card's mana cost, plus exile three other cards from your graveyard. Uh, you may cast those cards from your graveyard for their escape cost, and you may tap it to add green for each dinosaur you control. Um, this card's so cool. I love the naming of this card, too. You love this card? Yeah. I mean, if I'm playing a dinosaur deck, I'm going to want, like, the first ability is basically over, like, two turns, destroy three artifacts, get a 3-3 three, three, uh, dinosaur card, and then get a Gaia's Cradle. Like, you don't have to work for the Gaia's Cradle. You have to, like, wait two turns. But you got a removal spell out of it and a 3-3 and a three, three dinosaur in the meantime. I think my, my opinion on the card is everything you just said is fair in the sense that, like, this, if it works out correctly, it's cool. And I also think that, you know, some a lot of the different effects on this card are cool. 
I think this card in itself is trying to do too much. And for that reason, it feels a bit too complicated for me. That's the one thing about it that I don't love. It feels like the specifics of like each opponent, non-creature artifact, zero four wall. Then you get a three, three. Then it flips. Then you're dealing with escape, which is like a whole template from another set. The dinosaurs probably have to be in your graveyard for escape to be good. And then it's a cradle for dinosaurs. All of that is cool. And I can see this card will be satisfying if you're the dinosaur player. But it just, to me, it illustrates a little bit of the over complexity of card design nowadays. It feels like they have to fit so much onto cards. That's my only takeaway. I don't I don't think it's a bad card. I like I I can see if I was playing this deck being really happy to have this card. It just I just feel like they to to make magic design space work, there's a lot of leaning into let's just staple like five different things onto this card and it's like reading a book sometimes. Like I think double face cards in general, my opinion is that they're a mistake. I'm not a fan anymore. And I think that they just this card illustrates a lot of the issues I have with them, which is just the sure. sheer number of things. Sure, sure, sure. I, I think I think for me, the reason I like this card, A, it tells a story really well, and it's like yep. the one saga for the Jurassic Park set, which it should tell the story of the movie, right? Um, it, it All of its effects when they happen are relatively simple, right? You're not working very hard to do any of these things. And like, if the end result is just like wait three turns to get Jurassic Park to land out, which ends up being like your creatures have escaped and, and Gaia's Cradle, like that card's really bonkers. And suspend three get that land from your deck is like a totally cool card that I would play. So that, that's kind of the way I'm reading it. Like it has some like adjacent value on the front end, but the real one is you're playing a three mana suspend card to get this land and this land is sick. Yeah. 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 I, I like I said, I think that the, the effects on the card are very cool. I just, it illustrates to me a point that I, I find myself more and more aware of. And I think with designing so many magic cards, that's one of the limitations you run into, right? There's only so much design space. We they have to design will, a lot. I of will cards. need to just buy as many command powers with this brontosaurus on it as I possibly can. Um, fair enough fair enough all right so first off thank you uh whitney for joining us uh you've been a wonderful guest as uh how many stars would you give the jurassic park match the gathering collab one out of ten um well considering i haven't seen any of the other collabs fair fair um i don't know i mean i feel like it can't be as good as i'm sure the lord of the rings one is probably better Maybe. Debatable. Mm. Okay. Mm. Yeah, Lord of the Rings is pretty, pretty, pretty bonkers. Pretty, pretty high. I level. think that one. I think that one might be considered more problematic. Oh, really? Well, like two of the oh. cards are maybe too good that they made, if not more. I still think, from a flavor and design perspective, it's one of Magic's greatest accomplishments so far. That set has been. That set sure. is a pretty, sure. pretty remarkable success on multiple levels. Like even, even the two really good cards from it are are like. Maybe they're too good, but like the overall, like think about like think about like the the um the box toppers as a as a great example, right? Like they're the best box toppers ever, and flavorfully they're so fun. They're such a cool thing to have that I can play. You know, like it, I mean, I can't think of one right off the bat, but like you know, Bridge of Kazadum, and it's like it's a friggin' and staring bridge. Like that's so cool. Like I I I think that that set did a great job. There are, I have my complaints about there being too many of the same characters, but overall, I think you know Glenn and the team did an amazing job on that set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, really excited uh, for this set to come out, and excited to see all and all the other Exelon cards, which we'll talk about next week, uh, are all great. If, uh, thank you so much for listening to the episode. If you haven't, I would love to hear what your favorite card of the Jurassic Park cards uh, is in the comments. Also, if there's one that missed that you uh, wish was included, uh, let us know. Uh, make sure to follow the podcast at the like, subscribe, uh, noti bell. Uh, also check us out on TikTok, both Masters Modern and myself are on TikTok, and then also make sure to follow us on all the other social media platforms. Uh, and uh, thanks so much, Ben. Any any last minute shout? Oh, oh, this episode is brought to you by the Spikes Family Mission for Peanuts uh, card game. Um, it is a fun, uh, really quick uh, game. You can buy at Barnes Noble, uh, Target.com, Amazon, all all places games are sold. Uh, and then we'll also be at PAX Unplugged. So if you're going to be at PAX Unplugged, you're going to be there with a booth selling that and also demoing our very brand new game sonic roll uh, which we'll be starting to share more information out very shortly sounds good to me yeah thank you guys uh i'm doing all the content basically on the mm cast uh, the mm podcast tiktok so if you want to check out more of my content that's the one to do and obviously as you guys know Cass wiley on tiktok 
is the guy. So uh, you, you also be able to find Whitney in every uh, comment section of every Masters of Modern. She's such a she's wonderfully supportive troll of the account. That's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm helping you get comments, so the Whitney. algorithm is on tallies side. the interaction. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, thank you, yeah, everybody. Yeah. Thank you, Whitney. Thank you, Ben, and we'll talk to you all next. This has been a production of Time Traveler Media, sending podcasts into the future.